Abraxas, Guardian of the Universe. Abraxas is a film released in 1990 starring Jesse Ventura and Sven Ol Thorsen. You may remember Jesse Ventura from such roles as... Bunch of slack-jawed faggots around here. Are you ready for pay? This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Just like me. Are you ready for suffering? I ain't got time to bleed. And although you might not immediately recognize Sven Ol Thorsen's name, odds are you've seen him in many of Arnold Schwarzenegger's films. Had a role alongside Jesse Ventura in Predator. Knock, knock. Before we start the film, I feel the need to point out the cover of this copy. First of all, this picture of Jesse Ventura is very low quality. Let's compare it to this copy I have. It's almost like they photocopied this picture and then said fuck it and copied the copy about 50 times. Then someone decided to make him green. I can forgive the green though because maybe they're trying to make it look more spacey or more science fictiony or whatever but then they decided to photoshop out his eye beam laser vision thing poorly you can obviously see where the laser used to be over his cheek here this actually makes sense though considering he doesn't actually have laser vision in the movie so despite the five-year-old they hired to do the photoshop job i can forgive this however someone then said to that same five-year-old why don't you go ahead and put an eye patch on him? He doesn't even have an eye patch in the movie, and he obviously doesn't have an eye patch in the original picture. So I have no fucking clue what they were thinking with this. Especially considering that this is probably the worst photoshopping I've seen. Ever. Now, on top of all of that, they couldn't be bothered to put the stars of both the movies on the disc next to their respective titles. Treasure Box Collection, this is the worst shit. I have one more thing to share. Look at this menu. Just look at it. Look at that fucking space shuttle on top of that fucking airplane. These are called shuttle carriers, and no, there isn't one in the movie. Now, at first glance, it seems like the shuttle carrier was just photoshopped into the background of the menu. Well, guess what? It's the cursor. They chose a fucking shuttle carrier to be the cursor. Not only that, but when you go to the scene selection, there's only five. Five! And this is the good DVD. This is the version with the nice cover. This is the menu for the other one. Wait a minute. How come in your menu you have the normal picture, but on the cover you put this shitty piece of shit? Jesus Christ. Here's a Braxis, Guardian of the Universe. The movie starts out with some scientific nonsense being described by a Braxis, played by Jesse Ventura. Have you ever been vaulted? Let me tell you, it's not very pleasant. It involves reinforcement of skeletal and muscle structures by shortwave irradiation and ozone layering to 0 0.23. Very painful. Supposedly, this is the process that his species has to go through in order to achieve long-distance space travel called vaulting. Finders are required to renew their vows every hundred Earth years. I've renewed my vows about 90 times now. That's right, I've been on the force for almost 10,000 years. <laughs> oh my god. So some trees blow up and these guys appear in a local public access TV station. Still after a cometer? Yes. But now he's re-engineered his DNA coding and he's in the yellow star system. If he mates, the probability is the cometer will be born. These guys are here to watch over Abraxas and to provide us with an exposition dump. A big, meaty growler of a dump. Weren't Abraxas and Secundus partners? Ancient history, Hyde. Secundus turned bad a thousand years ago. You know that. You should not have sent Abraxas. Abraxas can handle it. He's brought Secundus in before. He knows the man. He knows how he operates. So Abraxas comes to Earth in search of Secundus, played by Spinal Thorson, and good thing they brought their ski suits! 
The only thing that matters is power. The power to no longer be a victim of fate. <laughs> Somehow, I feel like this adult contemporary flute music doesn't exactly fit the scene. A couple of young lovers with the license plate 986 ICE. This is ICE. Just so happen to come out here to Canoodle, and of course, Secundus finds them. The girl manages to get away, but Secundus catches up to her and... I really do need your body. DNA infusion complete. Reproduction commenced. Oh my god. Does that... Does that count as sexual assault? What happened to your face? I was vaulted T-squared. What the fuck does that mean? You had it all. An almost immortal lifespan, virtually unlimited power, almost, virtually. It's not enough when I can have it all. I have a feeling that they asked Schwarzenegger to do this role, but he was like, no, no, but I know someone who's perfect for this role. He sounds just like someone doing a bad impersonation of me. It seems that Secundus's goal of coming to Earth was to impregnate a birthing member of the human race so that she could give birth to the co-mater, which will be able to compute the anti-life equation. It's kind of like an alien version of Rosemary's Baby. So the girl starts going through hyperpregnancy, and Abraxas has the chance to kill her spawn before it hatches, but he has a change of heart and just walks away. Well, it turns out the girl has the exact same change of heart when she decides not to drown her alien baby in a river. Cut to the girl showing her parents her brand new baby and her parents disowning her. There's only thing worse than protecting a delinquent father is not knowing who the father is. I have nothing to be ashamed of. If you want me to leave this house, I will. I want you to leave this house. Don't you think they would have noticed that she wasn't pregnant yesterday and then today she suddenly shows up with a baby? So we find out her name is Sonia Murray, although you can barely tell from the quality of this copy. Sonia Murray. Donia Marie? Cut to five years later, and Sonia tells us that her son, Tommy, is mute, and we get to see the two happily playing in the snow, intercut with some explosions. I've never told him what his father was. All right. So now Braxis is with Dingus and Dongus in their space submarine or whatever, and apparently Secundus escaped from space jail? I'm not sure. Secundus would be irrelevant if you had eliminated the girl before she gave birth. Why weren't we told that he was ever put into space jail? We're certain now. The readouts indicate the child is a co -mater. The boy may be capable of unconsciously computing the anti-life equation. So we still don't really know what the anti-life equation is. All they say is that if it's unleashed, it will kill everyone or some shit. But why is it only within this kit? Is the anti-life equation just a genetic defect that happens when these specific aliens have babies with humans? Travel warps are like wormholes connecting different parts of the universe. Kind of like a galactic subway system. Thanks, Jesse, for explaining the one aspect of this movie that I already fucking understand. They're a natural phenomenon that we've learned to use, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. Sonya has a meeting with the principal of Tommy's school, played by Jim Belushi. At the time, Jim Belushi and Marjorie Bransfield were married, so I'm guessing she probably begged him to be in this little bullshit movie she was making. 
Well, do you think maybe that uh, Tommy's acting out because his father isn't around and he's not speaking because he's angry? No, I think he's mute. Then we get the best chase scene between Secundus and Abraxas featuring some really out of place new age jazz fusion thing with the music. So Secundus throws Abraxas down a hill and runs into this family of campers. What are you doing here? What do you want? I'll have to I am insufficiently charged to activate this vehicle. Give me the keys. <gasps> Grab the keys. Michael, Michael, get, get the keys. Get. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Praxis tries to stop him by riding on top of the car, but fails miserably. You really ought to get an alarm system in here. For what? To protect a few bags of organic pasta? Oh, geez, I'm, oh, I'm... Yay! Clumsy Cop Johnny! Here. Bye. Abraxas very nicely asks the yeah. same campers for a lift. Could you please provide me with ground transportation? Cut back to the cops talking about nothing, then back to Abraxas in an RV. Perhaps you'd have some local clothing I could wear. Sensors indicate appropriate power source in this vicinity. Okay, so that thing that's talking to Secundus is his answer box. It's this computer thing installed in his arm that he needs to charge. No coke. So here's where we see that Secundus can hold someone and run a test for the anti-life equation. If the person doesn't possess it, he blows up. Apparently. Run the test. You fail. So what makes you think you can locate my 4x4? My box has VD, trust me. What? My box has VD, trust me. What? My box has VD. What? Your what? VD. Vibrational detection. Good lord! There had to have been something better to call it than VD. Everything, even machinery, has its own particular vibrational frequency. How about... Suppressive Tread Detection. STD. Oh, wait. Then it must be able to pick up this guy as well. No. Members of our force were taught to avoid VD. Well, I'm glad for that, Abraxas. At least you were taught to be safe. Anybody belong to that poor excuse for a forklift out there? Needs a safety check. Talking now. It's mine. Got a problem with that? Uh, Billy, okay. Johnny here was just doing his job. He doesn't mean anything. Sheriff Sharp, under section 217. Johnny, that Johnny, he longer. just takes the tractor from town to the farm. He never causes any I'm problem. trying to... Johnny, shut the fuck up. So basically, Secundus is just going around town blowing people's heads up until Abraxas finally finds him. Let her go, Secundus. Do what he says. You will kill her. Ooh, look at that. Abraxas has a rat tail. Okay, you can't tell me. You're right. The ah. new head the best. Ah. Take me. Put your gun in my pocket. Yeah, kick him more! Have a nice day. Man, that guy read his line with about as much enthusiasm as a mold spore. Best stunt in the movie. So Secundus gets away again. And Abraxas chases after him. On foot, of course. We cut to the school for shitty child actors, and Tommy's having a bit of a hard time. Come on, I said beat it! Hey, Willie! Look, I make you wet your pants! So, Tommy has telekinetic powers of some sort? Is that what the anti-life equation is? The power to make people piss themselves? Oh, okay.
Okay, that's a little better. Sonya and Tommy go out to a movie and she lets her friend and her friend's kid stay to watch her TV. And guess what? Secundus breaks in and thinks this kid is Tommy. Before he could go all scanners on the kid though, Abraxas leaps through the window. The kid breaks free and his mom runs out of the house. Jesus, lady. You're just gonna leave your kid like that? Did he just impale him with a lamp? Holy shit! So Abraxas and Sonya meet again. Secundus is wandering the streets and learns about strippers. I knew we saw a man. A woman. Women! Ah, oh, you're looking for women. Like exotic dancers. Hey, watch this! Ugh. It appears that Abraxas has shut down his answer box. What the hell are they looking at? An egg in the Matrix? Secundus in a direct confrontational... Hello. Tired. Do you want to sit up here with me? Oh my god. Abraxas, no. So apparently the original version of this movie had Sonya showing everything in this shower scene, but the makers decided to cut the nudity in order to maintain a PG-13 rating, and I'm sure that decision really helped to broaden their audience and increase their box office draw. Come back. Do you like functioning in the vocal mode? Vocal mode is necessary to serve and protect you, Abraxas. You will speak when spoken to. Or I will deactivate your vocal mode. Jesus, Abraxas cooled on the forceful verbal abuse. Oh! Hehehe, <laughs> Abraxas. Anyway, Abraxas is doing this, and Sonya kind of flirts with him. Just before I gave birth to Tommy, you were gonna kill me. He had orders to kill me. Why didn't you? I think. And Abraxas flirts back? You had done no wrong. You were an innocent. And you were brave. I could not kill you. I think. Now you'd think there would be an awful sex scene here, but instead, we get Secundus ordering breakfast. Here's the menu. This I cannot eat. Uh, no, you, you just pick something. Very good. I will have that. We'll take care of this right here. Oh. By taking care of Secundus. How are you going to do that? I've done it before. I'll do it again. Yeah, except when you did it before Secundus managed to break out of space jail, so you're not exactly the most reliable space cop. I'm going away so he won't find me and you will be alright. I love you. God damn it, Tommy. Tommy makes his way to some sort of abandoned barn or something, but Abraxas and Sonya aren't far behind. Secundus goes to the school, where they keep the lights in the hallway very dim, and threatens to kill all the kids one by one and touches one of them weirdly. Oh yeah, by the way, one of these guys is the director. I'm not sure which one, and I don't fucking care. And this is the co -mater. I want him now. We have 30 seconds before I kill the children. Why are you doing this? What do you want? He literally just told you what he wants. Tommy stupidly almost surrenders himself to Secundus. You are my son. No. It's not true. Nope, nope, nope. Too easy. But Abraxas comes in and tells Tommy to run. Run, Tommy, run. God damn, what is with the music in this movie? Tommy discovers his new combustion powers and turns into an adult stuntman a few times as Secundus slowly pursues him through this abandoned factory. Abraxas comes in late, as always. So now do we get the awesome end battle between Abraxas and Secundus where Abraxas uses his laser eye? No, we get punching and explosions. So Secundus is dead and they make their way out of the building. Oh no! Good. I wanted more fight scenes between these two. 
I really did. So, why isn't he allowed to kill Secundus? That would have ended the whole thing a long time ago. Test for the anti life equation. Warning Testing will result in this corporation. Testing will result in this corporation. Testing will result in this corporation. Oh my fucking god. Your mission is completed. Command congratulates you. So, even though he killed another finder, which he was told was illegal, Command wants to congratulate him? He wants to stay with Tommy though, which means he's quitting being a finder. I cannot leave. To refuse a transport order means to forfeit your finderhood. I know. I kind of like that guy. Uh, let's go. Coffee and donuts? Yeah. Yeah, after all that nothing we did, we need a break. I'm really glad you're staying. Me too. Oh, oh, Tommy said me too. <laughs> Dumb. I love this movie. Seriously, I own five copies of it. Look at this shit. I have a framed laser disc of a Braxis. Can you believe that? I mean, it's bad. Sure. But it's so much fun. Just some of the choices the creators made and the weird performances by the two lead actors make it really great for me. In case you were wondering, this movie was written and directed by Damien Lee, who directed Ski School, and nothing else I've ever heard of. Although, he was a producer on Merlin, and I love Merlin and... Oh. Not the Sam Neill Merlin. Damn it! 